Hi everyone! So it is the weekend and as you know from the last video I was practicing my bandage skills. I have some little beans in the background, Nix and Dylan, and my willing victim, Dolly. Hello. <laughs> so I can show you how to bandage, how the nurse taught me even. Okay, so she taught me to go this way with your bandage the opposite way to the way you put your toilet roll. That's the right way, isn't it? Oh, the toilet debate. Okay, so she taught me to go here to the out of outer part of the toes and then just secure it tightly and then you go round again one more time in the middle of the foot and then you have to lift the foot and then you go round the ankle but just on the just oh god can you see that hang on just like that so it's not quite covering the heel it's just lining the heel and then you go up and over but this time you're going to go over the heel so it covers the heel and then you're going to go up the leg put your leg down thanks and we're doing 50% because the bandage has to line this bit with 50% of this bit, like that, if that makes sense. So you've got 50% bandaging. Is that okay, patient? That's, that's lovely, thank you. <laughs> oh God. Hang on. I'm going to leave a bit too much. There you go. 50%. And then that's one layer. I'm going to go over with um, a bandage, crepe bandage. Exactly the same. So line it up with the toes. And then you're going to go over, sorry, <laughs> and then round, and then just on the edge of the heel, then once more over the heel to cover, and then just going up 50%. Yeah, I can put your leg down now, thanks. <laughs> you can come again. That. and then you put your tape on Ta -da! so today is Monday it is week two of my management placement which is our sign-off placement as a student nurse to say I'm safe to see patients as a newly qualified nurse so it started off amazing again. I've had a really interesting morning. I've been up at the hospital with my mentor. We had an MDT meeting to go to about a patient that's gonna be sort of discharged back into the community. And it was just interesting to see all of the different people and the different inputs. So we had the social worker, we had like a case manager, ward, nurse. I'm not 100% sure on her role. And we had I, someone from the mental health team as well. And then we had us as district nurses to represent the patient as a district nurse. So it was really interesting, really, really complex case by the sounds of it. I can't really go into too much detail because of confidentiality and all of that jazz as always, but it's a really interesting case. It was really good to sit into that meeting and just see how everyone worked together and everyone was actually acting as an advocate for the patient and voicing their concerns, which was amazing to see that everyone the main focus was the patient and their best interest at all times was maintained. So it was really good to see that, but seeing it from different angles and different perspectives of people. So that was really good. Then we had a couple of other patients that we went and did. So we had um, a leg dressing to do, two, two legs on the same patient. So he had both of his legs dressed and we had an insulin patient to go to. And we had uh, another patient with dementia who we needed to get bloods from. 
and do a temperature because she's got a few things going on so it was really interesting to go to her and she was so lovely and she let us do everything because from what I've heard she's refused and declined care previously she's been declining her temperature and things like that so it was really nice that she let us do that today and she trusted us to do that so that was really really nice and lovely to see and apart from that I've done documentation I've been writing down as well terminology in my book because there's some terms that I didn't quite understand and I need to print out pictures so I can visualize it as well as understand the words because it's to do with wounds and the presentation of the skin and the surrounding skin and there's all these different words that I didn't fully understand but I'm going to learn them by the end of this placement. I'm going to have these down to a T, hopefully, because it's really important for documentation, really important for a, to sort of assessing a wound as well and deciding what to do with the, these wounds. So it's really important that I understand it. So I've wrote them down. I've started to make a list. I've started explaining what they are, but I, I just want to print out and just to add to my own little placement pack that I've got, just the presentations and all of that and I want some images to go with it as well so hopefully I'm going to get on that. This is actually the first placement that I've had where I've given myself homework to do. I've never done this before. I'm usually, I'll write down things in my book as I go and I'll ask questions and nurses will ask questions of me and I'll find out the information if I don't know but I've never actually been so interested in something where I'm writing down the terminology I want to print pictures I want to understand it so I'm giving myself extra homework when I get home so I've never had that before and I just love it I love it so much and you know I love it because I want to do these things when I get home and I want to tell you all about it so yeah so it's been an interesting day it's been amazing and yeah I'm gonna stop talking now because this is already like five minutes long so I shall see you all tomorrow so today's Tuesday I've just got back from my placement and again another completely mixed day so today we have been in clinic and so this is for patients that can leave their house and they can come into clinic and they just need that extra care in whatever way. So today we had a mixture of patients. We had some leg ulcers, we had pressure sores, we had a catheter washouts or bladder washout. Apparently they've changed the name now, but I can't quite remember what she said, but apparently bladder washout is not the term to use anymore, but that's pretty much what it was. You sort of remove the catheter, you get 100 mils of saline, push the saline in sometimes they use the 50 mil bag and um, push the saline through the catheter up into the bladder and then it comes back out again to sort of wash it out and just make clear it if there's any um, obstructions um, this also assesses if there's any blood if it's dark if it's cloudy anything like that but luckily we were good today it was clear it was clean it was lovely so we didn't have to do anything further with him we also had a Doppler assessment. So a Doppler assessment is, so there's two ways of doing a Doppler assessment. There's a manual one and there is an electronic version. So the manual one is where you put the gel. There's like a, um, a jelly that they put on first and then it's like an ultrasound. So they listen to the sort of the blood flow in the legs. But the electronic one is like a blood pressure cuff. So they put a blood pressure cuff around the arm and then one around each foot. This just gauges the arterial pressure in each foot. So if they have a good flow of blood, they can compress the leg then for compression therapy. If they don't have a good flow and it's really restricted, they're not gonna wanna compress that even more. So they can't do compression therapy. So this is what a Doppler assessment is used for in this case with lymphedema, any sort of edema in the legs. They use the Doppler as well on wounds that are taken longer than, I think it was six weeks. So really sort of long-term wounds that are taken a long time to heal. They do the Doppler assessment because they think maybe compression therapy might benefit and it might just help repair the wound a lot faster. So we did that today. We had another patient with extremely high blood pressure. So we had to refer them back to the GP to get this monitored because it was really quite high. It was quite concerning. They also had a wound as well that we had to redress. So yeah, so we had quite a lot going on, a mixture of things today. We also had to sort out patient care notes because there were some notes that were sort of missing things. There was notes that were all over the place and we're just making sure they're all up to date as well. So. We did that sort of towards the end of the day 
and yeah that's it really and i'm gonna end it here and i shall see you all tomorrow tomorrow i'm with the band seven nurse to sort of see what she does and how she manages things and then i've got a palliative training session two till four i think at one of the hospices so that's gonna be really interesting so it should be a good day tomorrow as well so yeah that's it from me i shall see you tomorrow so today it is, um, what day is it? Oh my God, I've lost track of my days. It's Wednesday, thank you. It's Wednesday, I had to remind myself, it's Wednesday. So today I have had a really busy day, it's been manic. I've been out with the band Seven Nurse, it's been really amazing. We've had complex patients, so we've had the really complex wounds. We had a home visit with a patient where we had to go in with the tissue viability nurses, so that was really interesting to see. We had a new patient assessment, which was really interesting interesting again so we did all of our observations and everything pressure area checks and everything and yeah it'll be nice to follow up on that one I've discovered that I really really like new patient assessments because I like to know the patient from the beginning to end it's been really hard for me to go into a patient that I don't really know and you're sort of trying to look through the notes and find what's wrong with the patient, what's been going on with the patient, what you're doing for the patient. And when documentation isn't quite 100% clear, it can be a little bit, oh. So it's just really important that I've discovered that documentation, again, I've said this before in previous vlogs, documentation is key. When you're going to see a patient, document every single that last detail so that if a new nurse is picking it up, they know exactly what they're doing with that patient. So I've been trying to write my notes really thorough for the thorough, this can't even speak, thorough, so that another nurse, whoever's going to come in, can pick it up and go, this is what they did with that patient. So it was really interesting. The second half of my end afternoon, I went to palliative care training over at the John Taylor Hospice. And this was actually amazing because even though I've had patients die on me, I've had end of life, I don't fully understand palliative care. I've never dealt with palliative care. I don't know what hospice, hospices do. I assumed that hospices were mainly for the end of life stages, but actually they do a whole lot, a whole lot more than I, I actually ever imagined. They do so much. So I've actually just arranged to go out with the palliative care nurse for the day in October and hopefully learn absolutely everything about palliative care because that's something that's actually really interested me now is really interesting training session and it, that'll just be fantastic so when I go out for the day with her I will do a whole vlog on palliative care I think and just obviously the basics because well not basics because palliative care is so specialized but just I'm gonna just teach you whatever I learned on the day basically. So yeah, so that's been my day. It is five o'clock now. I finished a little bit earlier today. So I'm going to have my dinner. I don't know what I'm gonna have. I'm gonna shower. I'm gonna settle down for the night. I'm gonna chill. It's gonna be amazing because I've finished early. <laughs> and i shall see you all tomorrow again i probably won't vlog friday i'll just leave it as, as thursday because this vlog's just going to be way too long it's going to be long-winded i don't want to repeat myself i just want to give you all the new information that i do rather than repeat myself so yeah i shall see you all tomorrow guys it is now thursday i've had another amazing day it's been so so busy um, I finished about half past five and then my mentor dropped me home. Oh, it was so lovely of her. So I didn't have to get changed to walk home out of my uniform. Um, she dropped me literally on my street and yeah, it was just so lovely of her. I'm very grateful for that. Today we had a mixture of patients again. We've had wounds, we've had pressure area checks, we've had skin checks, we've had skin reactions to look at, we've had male catheter to insert. We had a diabetic patient. We've had a whole range of patients today. We've seen quite a lot of patients. I can't even remember where we started and when we, where we finished. It's been really busy. And then we had to update all of the notes and everything for the patients. We usually have handover about half past one. So we have our handover and the whole, whole team come back to the office, speak about the patients, any problems, any concerns, all of that, update everybody. And then we go out back out and see patients afterwards. So we did that. I looked up some medication because there was a medication that we weren't too familiar with. We'd never seen before. We'd never heard before. It was very strange. So I looked that up and that was quite interesting to look that up. It was called... Um, 
by Dario, something like that. I'm going to put the name there. I'm not very good at saying names. Yeah, you know, I'm not very good at this. So I'm going to put the name there. Tell me how it's said. So I had to look up that and it was for type 2 diabetes. It's this particular one's only given weekly. It's not an insulin. It's a different type of diabetic medication. It's an incretin mimetic. So it mimics the incretin or increatine, however you want to say it. I don't know how to say these words again. It's the most frustrating part for me is not being able to speak. <laughs> and sometimes I'll say a word of a medication or something. And they'll just be like, that's not how you say it. You say it like this. I'm like, oh, okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm not the best at medication pronunciations. They're all in Latin, apparently. So I'm really sorry about that. But um, yeah, I've got my book here. I'm looking at it now. Oh God, look at my scribblings. Look at that writing. That's terrible. That is not how a document in care notes, I promise. It is much neater than that, I swear. So this one is an agonist. It binds to the GP GLP-1 receptor. So then once it's done that, it increases the insulin secretion, but then it suppresses the glucagon um, secretions. And then it slows down the gastric emptying as well so it does quite a few things it's more of a slow release long-term acting sort of injection rather than fast acting which is quite good i think for this lady this one is only to be used for type 2 diabetics not for type 1 and it's only as a last resort if other medications aren't working and the patient's got uncontrollable diabetes with the blood glucose levels and all of that if they can't control it with using other medications like metformin and such things. It can also be used in co conjunction with other medications like metformin and things. It was really interesting to read up on that and have a look at that and everything that it does and looking at the nice guidelines around it because I'd never seen it before. I'd never heard about it before. The injection size, it's like a rocket. I was there like, I've never seen this before. And yeah, so me and my mentor were both a little bit stumbled by that and we had to look at the instructions on how to mix it up and give it because it was one that you had to mix up as well inside the barrel it was very strange i'd never seen it before but it was really really interesting for me to see that so yes that has been my day it's been really really interesting it's been another amazing week i'm back in tomorrow and then i'm off for the weekend and i'm back monday as i said i'm not going to vlog tomorrow i don't want to repeat myself so I'm going to leave the video here and yeah, I shall see you all next week for another amazing week of learning and yeah, I hope you have a great day, hope you have a great Sunday, hope you have a great week, whatever you're doing, whatever you're up to and see you next week.